Hey, thanks for stopping by my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the following feature in React. So imagine I'm filling out this field and then I enter a character that's not allowed. You can see that error warning animates into view. And then when I fix my mistake, it smoothly animates out of view. Now you might not think this is a big deal, but in the world of CSS and JavaScript and animations, you don't just want to remove this from the DOM in one millisecond. You want to give it a little bit of time so that it can animate out of view and then remove it from the DOM. Now in the past, I used React Transition Group to set that up, but in the newest versions of React, you have to give it a ref. It just gets a little bit messy. So I've recently switched over to use Motion, and in this video, we're not doing anything special, but I just wanna show you how easy Motion makes this. Now I wanna preface this by saying that you can do so much with the Motion package. Uh, this is using maybe less than 1% of what Motion is capable of, I'm just really impressed with how easy motion makes it to have an exit animation. So let's check this out. Let's build this feature together. And what's really nice is if you perform the operation really quick, you can see it catches the animation halfway and reverses it. So let's see how you can set this up. All right, so behind the scenes, I just switched to a copy that is not finished. So now we can implement it together. So you can see if I have a mistake, it places it right here. That's not what we want. It's not animated. So let's set this up together. The first thing I would do, and this has nothing to do with React or any package that we're going to use, is simply make this element use absolute positioning so that there's no layout shift when it appears. Right? I essentially want it to just sit uh, behind this element. Let me show you what I have in mind. In my CSS, or in my JSX, I should say, here is the paragraph that gets displayed only if there's a problem. I would just give that, and I'm using Tailwind, but just tell it to use absolute positioning. Cool, so you get the idea. Now it's not going to cause a layout shift. And now we would just wanna sort of slide it up into view when it makes sense to show it. But actually before we set that up, let's make sure that this element is not see-through and make sure that it's Z-index sits on top of that element. So on the input, I would just give it, you know, a solid white background like BG white and then relative and maybe like Z2. Cool, so now if I have an error, you can see that error paragraph. It still appears in the DOM when you would expect it. And as soon as I remove that mistake, it gets removed from the DOM. We just can't visually see it. So now we just wanna use like translate Y or move its positioning up a little bit and we wanna animate that. So here's what I would do. We're going to install the package. So npm install motion. Let's go import that up at the top. So we would say import and we wanna pull in both animate presence, comma, and lowercase motion from motion slash react. Now let's go use these down in our code. So you just find this little bit of area that's conditional. Uh, here's our warning message. I'm just gonna take all of that and cut it into my clipboard. And then I want to wrap or you know have a component called animate presence, opening and closing. Inside that animate presence sandwich, just paste in your existing code. And now instead of a paragraph, instead of like a P tag, we wanna use a lowercase motion dot P. You could say lowercase motion dot div dot span. Since I had a P, let's keep it a paragraph. And then make sure you have the matching. You can see my text editor doesn't know to have a matching closing tag. So motion dot P. Cool. Now on that motion dot P element or component, we just give it a few props. And if you're using any sort of AI autocomplete, it's going to tell you what those props are. But just for educational purposes, let's spell them out manually. In this case, I actually don't need initial and I'm not gonna use opacity. I'm gonna use uh, translate or the Y positioning. So let's do this. The first prop is animate equals double curly brackets. And I'm just going to change its Y coordinates or its you know vertical positioning to be negative 100%. Whoops, that value needs to be wrapped in quotes like this. Then let's give it another prop called exit. And then on exit, I just want to put its Y positioning back to zero so that it's essentially hidden again, right? Say quotes 0%. So in other words, right now it's sitting here. When it's time to show it, just animate it up its own height, 100% negative. And then when it's time to get rid of it, just put it back here. Finally, we just give it a prop of transition equals double curly brackets, duration. Let's say, yeah, 0.3. You can also give this an ease function. So you can say ease. Yes, that's the one it knows what I like to use. I like to use ease in out. Let's give this a save and test it out. So if I have an error, it slides into view. As soon as I correct it, it slides out of view. It's that simple. So we didn't have to mess with manual timers. Uh, we didn't have to give it a ref like you would with React Transition Group. We didn't have to dig into CSS to create different classes and animations. The package handled 
everything for us. I'm a huge fan of this. I can only speak from my experience, but handling exit animations has never been this easy. That is going to bring this video to a close. I encourage you to go give Motion a try. And if you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy my full React course. You can find a link to this landing page in the description and in the pinned comment. In my course, we build the front end, so we don't build the back end. We consume API endpoints that already exist, but we build the front end for a spa where you can sign up, you can create posts, you can follow other users, build out a homepage feed, uh, and have a live chat, a live search component, and more. Sometimes when you're trying to learn React, it's really just a matter of confidence and building a fully functioning front end app like this can really boost your confidence. Thank you so much for watching until the very end. Hope you feel like you learned something and stay tuned for more tutorials.